Testing one, two, three. EY is launching a series of podcasts on the buzzword today, Generative AI. Hello everybody, I am Divyesh Lapsewala, tax partner at EY. It's my pleasure to host you today. EY is launching a series of podcasts on the buzzword today, generative AI. And as a tax partner, we want to focus on what does it mean for tax. We all know the amount of traction generative AI is building today. We all know that there is a lot of conversations of large language models, of a transformational impact that this technology can bring to our lives. Yes, we read about many use cases as they are called in practical daily life, but are they also meaningful for tax? We have to unravel that and that's the reason why we are here today. So in the first series, I'm going to talk with our digital tax leader Rahul, who also has been focusing on generative AI for the last one year and he loves this topic. So great to have you here, uh, Rahul. Thanks, Zivesh. Absolutely fun and looking forward to, to spending time on this web webcast and, and thanks to all the listeners and viewers for, for, uh, for joining. Lovely. So what we want to do today is let's peel the onion. Let's understand how generative AI can be connected to tax. What is really the hype? What is the mystery? And what is the future looking like? Yes, we are all stargazing today, but that's the way the technology works. So let's begin first by understanding where we are. And Rahul, that opens my first question to you. Mm -hmm. Please tell me how is generative AI, in very simple terms, different from all the software and technology that we've been traditionally using? Yeah, so the way generative AI is actually fundamentally different from everything else that we have seen uh, in technology, particularly in tax. Uh, what we all have seen and used so far is very complex coding, uh, complex forms. Often tax professionals do not understand what's going behind the scenes and they almost every time need a tech professional or IT professional to come in and help. Uh, now come Gen AI, it is actually reversing this. It is democratizing knowledge of technology and coding. Uh, so far we used to say, we used to tell our younger professional kids that learn coding, it will help you in life, right? But uh, with Gen AI is actually the reverse. All you need to know and master generative AI is common sense in English, that's it. With that, you Lovely. can be a great prompt engineer and, and get excellent outcomes for you. That's fantastic, Rahul. Thanks, I think that's, that's a good opener for us. So now that you've created this excitement for us, tell me really what are the use cases that you are working on? Okay, so this is the most fun part, Devesh. Uh, tax, AI or AI in tax. Uh, I mean, when people ask me, what are the use cases? Uh, my simple answer is, uh, wherever there is human, there is a use case for AI. It's oh, as brilliant. simple as that, right? <laughs> you don't have to think beyond that. You have to just apply and lens that, uh, are you doing something which you don't like? And then think whether AI can do it for you. <laughs> Right. So, so let's 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 talk a little bit specific. Now, as tax professionals, what do we do? Uh, broadly, we do three things. We deal with data, clients, or whether it's our internal functions. True. They give us data. We advise, whether it is advising clients or advising our internal stakeholders. We advise, and then lastly, we defend our positions. So it's litigation. Now, you take each of these three areas, there are many, many use cases which AI can help uh, and make lives of people better, improve productivity, and most importantly, improve quality of the work. That's the part which I think is, is a lot more exciting than everything else, is improving work quality. Uh, let me give you an example around data. Uh, you know, as accountants, as tax professionals, we deal with general ledgers. We deal with loaded Excel sheets, and we are often asked to review these find out exceptions. Now, we've worked on use cases where you can straight away go and ask a question to an Excel sheet to tell 
that if this attribute is present or if this line item is present or if this non deductible or non creditable item is present it's just absolutely amazing how at the speed and accuracy with which this job can be done so so far this whole concept of you know test checking or just doing sam sampling i think that can just completely go away you bring in ai and you can do 100% validation of data invoices agreements you know uh, sometimes they comes in box wise and and i remember in good old days in trucks right uh, but how do you deal all of that ai can can do that like literally in matter of minutes and much better than what a what a human would do so that's ai for you <laughs> oh that is that is really nice but you gave us a good example for data and i and i think as a tax professional i can really relate to that problem uh, help me understand a little bit more about the other two pieces you spoke about which is research and litigate right so this is i think it gets even more interesting uh, this is actually for the first time we have been handed over a tool or a toy i don't know which one <laughs> yet but uh, which can which can really uh, start behaving and thinking like a tax professional for some i mean for the very first time something which has cognitive abilities to think like a an accountant or a lawyer so it's up to us how we use it again uh, i mean if you have to look at few examples uh, let's say you are given a 500 page agreement for review now you have to look for tax clauses you have to look for things which may have an impact from a commercial standpoint or a tax standpoint a traditional way would have been to take a print go through or do a control f and things like that uh, but you can never be sure about those That's ways of correct. working right unless you put days and days into it my fears <laughs> <laughs> absolutely so this whole data discovery or the discovery part which is integral to any research that you do uh, ai can help uh, coming to uh, reading orders court orders you know you're doing research you have 50 judgments to refer to now ai can simply go through 50 judgments and really tell you that hey i think the facts that you're looking for or the legal principles that you're looking for are present only in this 5 out of 50 okay. so you don't have to really go through 50 judgments now but really focus your efforts on doing high quality research only on these five items wow. so all of these are very very exciting ways of how you can use ai in uh, whether in research or in defending litigation type of things that is fascinating <laughs> fascinating but then uh, i mean one one thing that uh, worries me is that uh, are we understanding it well or are we not understanding it well uh, in terms of the capability and the power are we are we building misconceptions around it uh, and what's your view on that well uh, i think it's a great point devesh uh, while while there is immense promise there is immense potential but we must understand that this is still an nascent technology and especially in field like tax or interpretation of law or dealing with numbers especially which have to be filed with tax authorities right uh, you have to have human in loop i don't think uh, we are at a point where we can simply rely on machine generated outcomes and go ahead and submit we have to almost treat this as a copilot or a digital assistant which can do a lot of those things for you which which you don't like or you wish you had a magic wand uh, but at the end of the day you need a human in loop uh, who can come in and uh, really validate what is happening and then take on from there take the final decision and make the filing or make the judgment call so to that extent uh, yeah i mean it's it, it's it's a great assistant uh, and a and a great pilot uh, or a, a co-pilot but not an autopilot let's not mistake this to be an autopilot I think that's a very important point you make Rahul the human in the loop I love that phrase human <laughs> in the loop tell me more about this does it mean my job is secure and and on a more serious note uh, how do you see the role of individuals or professionals evolving along with this technology yeah so so devesh uh, i think long term view is very hard to predict for anyone where we will be in 7 8 10 years from now but if i if i were to uh, and and before that i think the other thing which will really shape the agenda of of uh, of professionals and tax professionals in specific will be government policy i think gov and as we know especially in india government is really in a digital overdrive uh, they have done some fantastic projects and outcomes uh, with use of technology 
and uh, it it and it is very very likely that government will use advanced ai such as generative ai and many other things in their ways of working so so to, so to come back to the point it's going to be two things how technology evolves and how fast it evolves and second the policy side of it how government adapts some of these things and in and in turn force taxpayers also to adapt it having said that uh, some things i think will happen for sure very soon i think uh, all of us will carry digital assistants some sort of tax assistants with us uh, when we will talk about budgeting when we will talk about manpower planning in future uh, we will be talking of both human assistants human uh, manpower as well as digital manpower interesting this is how it's going to shape in 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 my view uh, uh, imagine if if there is a court hearing which is going on Uh, or you are sitting before uh, uh, your authority arguing your case and you have a digital assistant going on your ipad or on a phone which is listening live what is happening and just telling you okay who you can do this take this argument rely on this case wow. right we some of the we saw some of the newer models which were launched just very very recently and their capability to listen live and give inputs live is just taking it to the next level imagine you can connect that technology with tax knowledge wow and so on the fly you can do many things uh so yeah i think the 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 future is is uh a bit unknown but certainly very very exciting and to your point whether jobs are secure well i think the place and time where we are in <laughs> india i don't think we need to worry about jobs the only thing i would say is uh ai will not take jobs away uh but we have to be careful about people who know ai <laughs> <laughs> i like that so you seem to be just very very excited and and uh, you know gungo about this so what's your summary view on generative ai well what really excites me uh, on generative ai is what it can do to transform people's lives specifically when i talk to professionals if you see uh, one common problem everyone has is time you know 8 out right. of 10 people whether it is in consulting in industry clients across when i talk to them they say we have too many things going on we just don't have time ai is this almost a magic wand which has been handed over to us uh it can really solve a lot of your day to day issues your team's problems if when if you spend time you you take effort to understand it make sure your teams are also understanding and you're adapting it fast so one big change to my mind it can bring uh, and it can be really a blessing is just make your lives better so uh, let's hope that it all turns out <laughs> the way we want <laughs> and uh, we can have the same conversation 10 years from now and both of us are around <laughs> <laughs> lovely lovely so thank you all for being with us uh, i think this was a, a good fireside chat uh, i have learned a lot today uh, i have learned most importantly uh, that it is a co-pilot and not an autopilot uh, but i think if you look at it deep down this is transformational uh, in my 20 years of work i have seen many tax changes i have seen many process changes uh, but i have personally not seen anything as tectonic as this this is here to stay it is going to impact but as rahul told us it is an enabler and therefore how do we use our digital assistants in the future how do we transform our lives how do we make ourselves more efficient our teams more efficient our processes more efficient our organization more efficient and how do we start using its predictive capability is an exciting path for all of us so so the take away is very clear get generative ai ready for yourself Thank you for being with us. This is uh, the first podcast. You will hear a lot more from us, and so please hang on and and stay connected to us. Thank you. Thank you.